If you're watching this, you're interested in the Karambit knife, or specifically the Spyderco Karahawk. My personal requirements for an everyday carry Karambit folder are a good hard stainless steel blade, one that will hold an edge, and a backlock to keep the blade securely open. With those two in mind, I own the Spyderco Karahawk and the Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit. The design and curvature of the Karambit is based on nature's efficient tiger claw. Hailing from Southeast Asia, its origins began as a farming implement, a fishing tool, and finally a battlefield weapon. The modern Karambit is now much smaller than its historic predecessor. This knife is closely tied to the martial arts of Penjak Salat, Malaysian Bursalat, and Filipino Kali, each with many forms of attack and defense. It can be used to immobilize a limb, cut and tear through flesh, and also as a striking tool. Let's talk about costs for both knives real quick. The Spyderco Karahawk cost me about $161. I bought it off of Amazon. The Cold Dead Hands Karambit I bought off of their website. It costs about, mm, about $100. I'll also link it below. Designed by Spyderco's founder, Sal Glesser, the Karahawk is a highly evolved folding version of the Southeast Asian Karambit. Its gently curved hawkbill blade is precision machine from CDG-10 stainless steel and features both a trademark round hole and an Emerson opening feature to ensure swift, positive blade deployment. It is supported by a high strength back lock mechanism designed to withstand the stresses of defensive use and made it to a handle constructed of full skeletonized stainless steel liners capped with textured G-10 scales. The Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit was designed by Mandiola Defense Solutions and Mike Villacamp Knife and Design Works. All Mandiola Defense knives use a 154CM American-made stainless steel that are machined, hand-assembled, and hand-sharpened. G10 scales encompass the Karambit to provide a sure and solid grip. Marketed as a survival type knife, it has attachments for use as a screwdriver and a wrench. The Knife Dimensions the Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit is made in Taiwan. Overall length is 7 inches, overall weight 5.3 ounces, the blade length is 2.25 inches. The Spyderco Karahawk is made in Japan. Overall length is 6.5 inches, overall weight is 3.8 ounces, blade length is 2.35 inches. Side by side comparison, you'll notice the Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit is wider than the Spyderco Karahawk. As you follow down the spine, it becomes apparent that the Cold Dead Hands Karambit is a more robust build instead of G10 running down the spine like the Karahawk. The Cold Dead Hands Karambit uses more stainless steel. This has to do with the texturing and the uses of the retention ring as it's pointed at one end to use as a window breaker or in a fight as an impact device for pressure points. This added steel counts for the Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit to weigh more than the Karahawk. The attention to detail on the Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit, like the jimping on the back of the retention ring as well as the finger grooves on either side help to facilitate a more ergonomic grip on the handle. While the Karahawk is more of a basic flat type of knife design, one thing I am going to comment on is the retention screws for the pocket clips. I've had to reorder from uh, Ultimate Knife for the Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit as two of the original screws stripped as I changed the configuration from right hand to left hand. I noticed today that I lost a screw from the Karahawk and I have ordered replacements for it off of eBay. Whether they are over tight from the factory causing stripping for this to happen or by me when unscrewing, I'll never know. So back to the comparison, the blade on the Karahawk is a gently curved hawk bill. It's a precise saber grind. The Karahawk blade thickness is about, oh, actually it is 2.5 millimeter exact. It is a tenth of an inch longer than the Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit, but conversely, the Cold Dead Hands Karambit is a much thicker blade. The blade on the Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit is also a saber grind. However, with an added wave that tapers to the cutting edge, the blade tip, called a talon design, is stunted to limit the tip itself from breaking. 
Between the two knives, I find the Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit to be more of a practical day-to-day -day use type of knife, you know, for opening boxes, uh, mail, etc. Knife Open and Deployment. So both Karambits are ambidextrous and are easy to quick to deploy. The Karahawk with its padded Emerson Wave, the Cold Dead Hands Karambit with its tool notch. The Spider Co always deploys with the Emerson Wave. There's just no question, it will always open. The Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karabit Notch, though, well, sometimes it will not catch with baggy or loose clothing. I tend to wear baggy cargo shorts, carrying my knife in my left pocket. My personal opinion on which is easier and quicker to open is the Spider Co. The Emerson Wave is much more aggressive no matter what angle you pull your knife out. In my case, in my pocket. Whether it is with a more forward pull or with a vertical pull while twisting the knife, the Spider Co. Karahawk will always deploy. The Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit is also a fast opener when pulled with more of an aggressive forward motion so that the tool notch will catch cloth and open the knife. Pulling it straight up and twisting or without a forward movement usually ends with the knife coming out completely or partially deploying. With tighter clothes, both knives tend to deploy properly. However, my one gripe I have with the Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit is due to its aggressive machining for the tool notch, the actual piece that catches uh, your pocket or clothes as you pull your knife out. Um, that piece will actually tear and rip any cloth it comes in contact with. Final thoughts and wholly my opinion. Given the daily choice I carry the Spider Co. Care Hawk, not because I don't like the Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Carabit, I actually like it more than I do the Care Hawk. It fits my hand better has more attention to detail for its uses, like finger grooves, point on finger, retention, etc. And it's much a much more beefier knife. The sole reason I don't carry it as often as the Spyderco is simple. I need to be able to rely in high stress situations for my knife to open and deploy. That it will grab cloth and go. I've never had an issue with the Spyderco opening no matter what. I can't say the same with the Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit. And it's not from a lack of drilling with the knife. I have shorts and pants all torn up from the Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit. The tool notch isn't aggressive enough to catch in every situation, while the Spyderco Karahawk with the Emerson Wave does uh, each and every time. So those are my thoughts, and you know what? You can't go wrong with either knife, uh, but I would give it, I'd give more of a nod towards the Spyderco Karahawk if you can afford it. If not, the Cold Dead Hands Ultimate Karambit is an excellent knife and one you shouldn't pass by. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe. I'll be making more videos and would love to have you watch them. Happy New Year.